Hey, and welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Ham Radio Dude. Thanks for checking out the channel. Today, we're going to take a look at the KG UB90 Plus. It's a handy talkie radio from Oshan, and it's capable of transmitting on two meters and 70 centimeters, as well as receiving on seven bands. We're going to take a look at the general specifications of this radio, take a look at the spectrum purity. We're going to see if the battery really is 2000 milliamps. And we're going to go ahead and test the output power as well as talk about a few accessories that come with this radio. This is just going to be an overview and then in future episodes I'll do a programming tutorial on the radio itself. Let's get started. The KG UV9D Plus, this radio right here, it was $169 at Ham Radio Outlet. And when I purchased it, it came with two antennas. Now, what I first learned is one antenna is for transmitting and the other one's for receiving bands. And I was able to determine that this is probably the transmitting antenna. And I know that because I tested the SWR on this as well as this. This didn't look too good in the two meter band, whereas this one had relatively nice standing wave ratio. The standing wave ratio at 144 megahertz was 1.72 to one with 39 ohms. It then went to 1.5 to one at 146.1 megahertz at 50 ohms and 1.93 to 1 at 148 megahertz at 47 ohms. This one was somewhere around 3 to 1. Additional accessories that come with the radio include a user manual, which is pretty detailed, and you also get a battery which is 2,000 milliamp hours, or at least it's advertised as that. Additionally, you get a belt clip, and I want to make note that the belt clip actually screws onto the battery as opposed to the radio itself. To insert the belt, or the battery rather, you're just gonna kind of place it in here right about this point and push up. Now the radio will turn on right here, but it actually isn't clicked in. You should feel a click. It's not that audible, but you might hear it. Once you hear and feel that click, then the radio is ready to turn on. Additionally, I received a battery charger and the power cable for the charger. Now the radio actually comes with the capability of not just dual display, but also dual reception or simultaneous receive. So you could actually receive on VHF, VHF, UHF, UHF, or a combination of VHF and UHF. But additionally, this is also capable of cross-band repeat. So as you're receiving a signal on one frequency, it's retransmitting it on the other frequency at the same time. That's kind of a cool feature that I've always kind of wanted in a handy talkie radio. I could see this being a radio that might be good for satellite operations because of the simultaneous dual receive. However, I don't do satellite operations, so I'm not quite sure about that. Maybe somebody can comment below. Additionally, it comes with a full color LCD display. You have a half of watt speaker, which does sound a little bit uh, distorted, if you will, and I'll show you that in a moment. And then you have a keypad here. With it being capable of holding up to 999 memory channels, I thought that was kind of a cool feature too. Whereas a lot of the radios that come out of the China area, which this is made in China, only usually typically hold around 128, give or take. The seven band receive frequency range is 76 megahertz through 108 megahertz or the FM radio frequencies. Uh, you have your aircraft bands, which is AM radio, and it's 108 to 136. 136 megahertz to 180 FM, 230 to 250 FM, 350 to 400 FM, 400 to 512 FM, 700 through 823 FM with the cellular range blocked. One thing I should make a note of here is the antenna port here on the radio itself is going to be a female, an SMA female. That means if you have an external antenna that maybe you want to use, or if you want to use an adapter to connect this to an external antenna, you're going to want to make sure that you have an SMA male to screw in. I will say this about this radio, this antenna right here, something is kind of weird about it. It gets to a point where it feels like it should stop right there and it slips or it slides and then it has to go a whole nother round. So I don't know what's going on with this. I suspect it's probably the antenna because when I put in the larger antenna, that does not occur. No slip. The next thing I want to discuss is the 2000 milliamp hour battery. And the thing about the 2000 milliamp hour battery is I thought no way that this is a 2000 milliamp hour battery. But I was wrong, and here we are with the battery. It says 2000 milliamp hours, and I just didn't trust it, so I ran a continual load tester on here. Let me see if I can increase that screen size for you. On the continual load tester, I drained this battery at a half of an amp, and I drained it for a total of four hours, and it came out to 2.08 amp hours, which is 2000 roughly milliamp hours. So that's pretty impressive. So with the battery fully drained, I went ahead and I placed the battery on a charger, 
and it's advertised that the battery will rapid charge in three to four hours, and it took roughly four and a half hours. I next observed just a couple of things about the radio and how it feels and how it overall looks. And I gotta say, this radio feels really good in the hand. It fits really well. I've said that about a lot of radios in the past, but if I were to compare it to just for feeling purposes, an FT65 from Yesu, I would have to say that the Yesu actually feels kind of bulky and almost squared is a good way to put it. And this is more rounded and it actually feels like it fits a lot better. Uh, if I were to compare it to something like a Baofeng UV5R, it's a lot taller than a Baofeng UV5R. Now, for the width, it's uh, just about the same width as well, if you could see that right there. But what I will say also is the plastics on this radio are pretty comparable to something like the Alinko DJVX50. I don't know if you could see that, but the plastics feel a little bit better quality than other plastics that I've used in the past. Uh, a little bit heavier, if you will. This radio, if you were to compare it in size to something like a UV9R+, Plus, it's a lot thinner and a lot slicker of a profile, as you see the rounded edges, whereas the Baofeng kind of, kind of is more boxy. And uh, they're about the same height. The Baofeng's actually a little bit bigger, or taller, rather. And width-wise, uh, this is definitely a lot, or a little bit more narrow. So I like the way this radio feels. With that, we have just a couple of things I wanted to make note of on the side here. You have your push to talk button. You have a button that could change into your different bands to receive on or your FM radio. You have a button that'll break the squelch. You have a button that'll turn on the flashlight, depending on how long you hold these. And I'll show all that in a later episode as well. And then you have a button that could activate the emergency tone which is pretty annoying. When you turn on the radio, you do see this color LCD display and it's nice to have a color LCD display. However, it is not very vibrant and there are three settings within the menu here that you could change to help the vibrance of the actual screen, but none of them actually get it to be super bright or super vibrant, if you will. I should mention the radio carries an IP55 rating, which means two things. The first five means that it protects you from limited dust ingress or a limited amount of dust is gonna go into the radio. And the second five means that it's protected from low pressure water jets from any direction. So you should be able to spray this and it would be okay. Again, we'll probably test that in a later episode. On the top of the radio, you have a couple things here. This is your power button. So you'll feel a click and you'll hear a click when it turns on or off and then that becomes your volume button. This right here will change your frequencies or your channels depending on what mode you're in. And you could always change the modes from VFO mode, which we're in right now, and you could just type in frequencies or memory mode. To enter VFO or memory mode, you would hold down this button. After you hold down this button, you can see now we're in memory mode. We're on a main channel right now, but if we wanted to go down to the other channel, all we would have to do at that point is hit the band button and our main mode becomes right here. You can see right now that I have KG UV9D on my, what we'll call the A band. This is A band, this is B band. That means right now I'm actually only listening to one frequency and that frequency is in the B band. If I wanted to listen to the both simultaneously, I could hit or tap the TDR button. Now we're basically doing our dual receive. Whenever I transmit, it's gonna transmit on the main frequency. However, if I were to tap this button here, it would transmit on the sub frequency. So. Push to talk, main frequency, this button here, sub frequency. I kind of like that feature to have a push to talk and then have a secondary or a B band push to talk. That's kind of cool. Now the radio is advertised as up to five watts on two meters. And I did test this. And on average, I got about 5.2 watts on two meters. So that's pretty good. On UHF, it's advertised as around or up to four watts and or 70 centimeters. And I got about 3.21 watts on 70 centimeters. How does this radio sound? Well, at the moment, I'm actually not hearing anybody on the amateur radio bands, and it's probably just a quiet time. But let's go ahead and just turn to NOAA weather radio here. That received the heaviest rainfall. Confidence in the exact location of the highest totals and the extent of any flood threat. Now, when you compare that to something like the Alinko DJVX50, it doesn't sound too good. But the timing, extent, and severity remain uncertain. Persons with interests should closely monitor the latest forecasts. The Alinko DJVX50, for example, sounds a lot fuller than the signal that you're going to hear on the Oshan. Now, the question a lot of people might ask is, how far can this radio contact? How, what's the range on this radio? How far can it go? The answer is, is it depends, and I got the pen out. If you're new to ham radio, there's a lot of variables in everything you do in ham radio. For example, if this is flat ground, and you're trying to talk to a radio that's right here, and you're right here, maybe you guys have no problem 
talking five, 10 miles if it's direct. But in every scenario in the world, there's some sort of variable, right? A building, uh, maybe a tree with a lot of leaves and foliage. Now, I would say that in a city-like environment or a suburb-like environment like I'm in, I might see two miles, maybe three miles. And it depends on the other station too. Where is their station at? And another example of that is I was recently on a mountaintop. This is ham radio, dude, on a mountaintop. I had five watts of power and I was using an HT antenna similar to this. And on another mountaintop was another individual. I don't know what he was using for power or for an antenna, but we made an 88 mile contact and that's because we were line of sight to each other with no obstructions, but also we were in the mountains where there's no interference from things like other RF devices or microwaves or anything that may interfere with your signal. So to answer your question, I can't tell you exactly how good of a distance this is going to get, but in the suburbs on average, I get somewhere around two miles. Now, if you want to talk to a repeater, you might actually be able to contact people further out because you're actually relaying your signal through a repeater. All right, I want to give an example of how these two radios sound side by side, just so you can hear the difference. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there was some car windows this morning, you know. So you could hear really quickly that this radio sounds a lot fuller even on two meters wideband. The radio is part 97 certified, and if that means anything to me, it should mean that it'll meet the standards for part 97 and the spurious emissions in particular. So I did run a spectrum analyzer on it, and I inputted it at one watt, and I used an attenuator, which brought me down to around negative 22 dBm. And what I'm going to say here is everything looks good. The radio meets the standards for spurious emissions, according to the FCC. So I'm very impressed. That was a quick overview or rundown of the KG UV9D Plus from Oshan. $169, seven bands that you could receive on, two meter and 70 centimeter transmit capabilities, cross band repeat, dual simultaneous receive. Uh, it's a no-brainer to me. This is a pretty cool radio for under $200. Now, in the future, I hope you join me while we program the radio manually, while we program it with a computer, and while we go over some of the menu functions. Until then, I'm Ham Radio Dude. Thanks for checking out the channel 73.